Hey you guys, it's Britt. Tonight we're here to talk about when going real life backfires and I also like to take a moment and acknowledge that Zap Girl came out with what she is calling an apology and give you guys some updated thoughts. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so I was over on TikTok over the last couple of days. First of all, I did take a little bit of a break to reset and kind of just take some time. Like I upload very consistently. I'm sure most of y'all know that if you're subscribers to my channel and I just needed to take a couple of days. There's just been some toxicity that I have come across online and things that are happening in the news and it's just all too much. and. You guys know I also work full time, so it's nice to just take a break and I appreciate having a community that not only appreciates that I'm really consistent, but also is very understanding um, if and when there are times where I take a break, take a day off from uploading, you guys totally get it. But we are back now and I want to talk about this situation because I have said for the longest time you know, don't go real life. Like I'm not here to go real life with people. If they are being hostile, angry, if they're doing something that I disagree with, if they're being annoying, I'm not here to go real life. Like I'm not gonna, you know, um, suggest that people show up at someone's home or uh, contact their employer or leak their cell phone number. Like I am not with that. And I will not sit here on my channel and create content that is doing those kinds of things because I don't agree with it. But a situation came up over the last couple of days that I came across and essentially this woman was leaving anti-Semitic, hateful, hateful comments on a Jewish creator's page. And social media did what they do best and they thought that they found her employer, they contacted her employer. Long story short, it was the wrong individual. And so this stranger who had a similar name was caught in the crosshairs of having their employer called, having somebody tell their employer a bunch of what was not correct information. And then the creator who shared the comment initially had to issue an apology. There were a lot of suggestions to this, um, to the creator to basically like contact the woman's employer, explain that it was a mix up, so on and so forth. But how do you guys feel about this? And I think about this quite often with people being exposed on social media. No, I'm not here to go real life. Now, if you're doing stuff that's super dangerous and super hateful like this, um, yeah, like you're, you're being an actual like piece of garbage and you didn't say just one thing, you're leaving multiple comments, you finally get exposed. And you know, that's kind of what social media does at the end of the day. Um, but I have thought about this for a very long time because at a certain point, somebody is going to be incorrectly identified as being someone who is disgusting and cruel, but it's actually the wrong individual. And once we have people contacting employers, leaking addresses, leaking phone numbers, you know, talking about people's families, and it's not even the correct person, you're really, really playing with fire there because this, um, you know, people could be fired, lose their income and their benefits, and it's the wrong person. What if they have kids at home? What if they have a, a sick parent that they're trying to take care of? What if they um, are just taking care of themselves? Like that is completely unfair to do to somebody when they were not the person that was being disgusting. They were not letting these things come out of their mouth and, um, you know, cause trouble for other people. So how do you guys feel about that? When it comes to going real life, do you have a set of conditions where you think that it's okay? Do you think that it's never okay? Like no matter what somebody is saying or doing on social media, 
like what's the line that you guys walk and how do you feel about the incorrect person being caught in crosshairs of an exposure on social media how do you guys feel about that like can I don't know like I would just feel really guilty because it's like okay well you identified the wrong person they've lost their job like their boss doesn't want to hear from you like they've already fired the person thinking that that was the correct person so I, I don't know I I think that there there is a small set of conditions where it's like okay that person was being an awful individual but if you're going to do anything you better make sure that it's the right person and that's where things can get really murky and have some really, really awful consequences for the person that could be unfairly identified. So I want to know how you guys feel about that because I've always had a very vocal stance about going real life and all of this kind of stuff. Um, and it is a risk, you know. You, you contact the wrong person, you identify the wrong person. It's just wild. So either way, the second thing that I want to talk about real quick, Zav Girl if issuing what she is calling my apology to Gannon's family and everyone I hurt. It was uploaded one day ago. It has 50,000 views. It has 6.3 thousand dislikes to 2,000 likes. And this is an absolute disaster. What I would like to say is I am not going to play all of her video. I'll insert a little clip so you guys get the gist. But she started out the video by saying basically she was not going to come up with a bunch of excuses. But as a lot of people do, she came up with a bunch of excuses to justify her own actions. The way that this apology should have gone. It's very simple. It is very, very simple to apologize. All that you have to do is say, I'm sorry, I messed up. I'm taking full accountability for this. And I'm going to take a break to educate myself on why I made such a stupid and selfish decision in the first place. And I will see you guys when I see you. That's it. I want to apologize to everyone I've hurt, but especially Cannon's family. I've been doing some major soul searching and reflecting. There are many trying to define my motivations, and while I'm not looking for forgiveness or trying to make excuses, I do hope to provide additional context that has not been made clear. I requested all the video, audio, and written records. I made no request for autopsy photos. I wanted all trial records. Autopsy photos just happened to be in the files. I spent time reviewing what I received so I could provide more info from the trial. I believe many of my images were already shown during the televised trial, and I saw the photos on other public YouTube channels that live streamed the trial. These photos were already public, although the video I put together with the coroner's voice was my own creation. I chose to put the video on Patreon because of the sensitive nature of the evidence. And I chose not to put the photos on YouTube, a public forum, where the views would have allowed me to make more money. Because the video was placed behind a paywall, rumors about the images not being blurred or being different than what was shown in trial started to surface. I realized my intentions were not communicated well. My channel style is sort of me hanging out with friends and speaking off the cuff, and I did not articulate my reasons or think my decision through. At this time, my Patreon website has been shut down, although you can see the photos published on other popular channels. Nothing you see is from me, nor will it ever be. I'm not this evil, heartless person like many are saying, but I'm also doing a lot of self-reflecting and I'm looking into sensitivity training. I did not want to add to the family's loss with anything I said or shared about this case. To Gannon's family, I have no words that can make this better. I am so very sorry for any pain that I've caused you. There is a pinned comment on her video, and of course it's somebody who is giving her a round of applause, and this is the comment that she decided to pin. It says, she did not sell autopsy photos on any site. Many of you were whipped into a frenzy by an envious YouTuber who has already roasted Zav on seven live streams, propaganda lies, trying to raise her own long stagnant sub count. Why should Zav apologize for a false narrative? Zav had to explain what really did happen before taking responsibility and conveying her feelings towards the family. I see some pretty famous YouTubers blasting Zav for selling content when they all have their own Patreon, Patreon sites for more sensitive discussions with their private paid memberships. And she liked the comment. If you're actually sorry for what you did, this comment wouldn't be pinned. If you had actual empathy for what you did and realized how disgusting it was, this comment wouldn't be pinned and it wouldn't be hearted. There are a lot of people responding to this comment and this um, individual made a very good point. 
She said whether or not she sold them, she sought out images of a dead, nude, decomposing child. Some things are not meant for your eyes. If you are actively seeking out seeing a, a dead child, you need a break from true crime. That level of desensitization is inhumane. How do you people not understand that? And a lot of her fans are excusing this by saying, well, the photos were included in the documents that she received through FOIA. I don't care about that because guess what you can do? As a YouTube creator, you can include or delete anything that you don't want people to see. As a video creator, there is a way to cover true crime without showing unedited images of decomposing children or adults. It doesn't matter. There is a way to create content that is actually for awareness and it's not charging $3 under a Patreon paywall where you have decided to include those unedited images of a child. Someone said, Letitia Cook, Letitia took Gannon's life and you took his dignity and you can't give it back now. Someone else said, I was a huge fan of yours and this is beyond disgusting. As a mother, I can't believe that you would do this to that poor boy and his family. Someone else said, it wasn't just a mistake. She thought it was okay to do and still does. You can't apologize unless you truly understand the impact of your actions on a, pe on a person or people. And I don't feel she does. She, sh she is sorry people didn't like it. That she's sorry the impact that it had on her. There is a difference. I think this video was full of excuses. I could have done without her smug look on her face and the careless nature of how this video was delivered. The biggest thing that people can do right now that is in their own control is to unsubscribe and do not click on any video that she publishes. She might be planning to take a week off. She might plan to take a month or two off. I don't know. Don't care to be frank but that is the biggest way to show these youtubers like when somebody does something that i don't like like before i had a commentary channel kind of taking it back to when i was simply a subscriber of people on youtube if i saw something that i didn't like from a creator i would unfollow and act like they didn't exist that's it because if, if a channel loses a bunch of subscribers and turns into a stagnant channel that is not getting views, that tells the YouTuber, okay, I was really high up at one point. I did that. I showed everybody that I'm a piece of garbage. And now people are no longer clicking on my video and I lost 20,000 subscribers. That is how to halt people from continuing to be uber successful on the platform that they basically you know screwed off and and showed everybody exactly who they are something else i didn't like about her quote apology is that she had links in her description box for ways that she can make money you can see links to her merch store here um so Here is an explanation of why I showed these horrible images on Patreon, but in case you want to buy a t-shirt and make me some more money, here's the link. It's nice and easy for you. An apology is not filled with explanations of things that should have been common sense and common human decency. Let's just take the entire, like, creator side out of this conversation for a couple of minutes let's simply talk about an adult with an intact moral compass being okay with spreading these images to anybody why as an adult would you even want to see those let alone share them she's sorry that people called her out she is sorry that brian enton blasted her on you know uh 
a huge platform that he has. And as far as Natasha Cooper, I don't know if she has mentioned me. I think she might have because I got a couple of her little trolls blasting my comments early this morning. But th it, this ain't it. When you make this kind of a mess and it's been shown to be a pattern, people see exactly who you are. You have shown them and they have accepted it. And as an internet society, we have every right to have a discussion around termites of true crime, like Zav Girl and Natasha. There are some others as well, but they are obviously the, um, you know, stars of the show right now. So good job being well known for showing autopsy images of a absolutely worst nightmare situation. Nobody would wish that on their worst enemy what that child went through. And you took the photos and went ahead and shared them behind a paywall. People called you out for doing such a deplorable, gross thing. And she's upset that people have an opinion about it. But nevertheless, I've got other videos to film, so I'm going to wrap up this one here. So for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.